Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's McCown's Jets going up against Tyrod Taylor's Bills. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, we are about 15 miles south of downtown Buffalo at what's now known as New Era Field here in Orchard Park. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with the New York Jets. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now. And both of these teams have top flight sitting callers. The Bills' new kicker, Stephen Hauschka, to get us going as we are underway from New Era Field. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. And out comes Josh McCown to lead the New York Jets under center in the quarterback position. It's been one that is often talked about for the Jets. And Christian Hackenberg struggling a little bit in the preseason. Is McCown the guy? I think he's going to be for this season because he's going to be what we call the bridge quarterback, the bridge to get them to another quarterback. They're hoping to identify that guy on their roster now, whether it's Christian Hackenberg or Bryce Petty. But if neither one of them seizes it, We'll be looking at the draft of 2018 with Josh McCown leading the Jets throughout the 2017 season. McCown has experience in the league, 38 years old now. First carry for Matt Forte, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down, nine yards to go. Again, they run. Again, it's Forte. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. The Jets here, their offensive starters, and you look at the receivers. It's a group that was already pretty thin. Then they lost Quincy and Nunez. so where do they turn now? Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? When you lose your number one receiver before the season even begins. Well, can it be Robbie Anderson, who had a nice game in the season opener against Tennessee? Could it be Jalen Marshall, the little slot receiver out of Ohio State? And how about our Darius Stewart? Third-round draft pick out of Alabama. Has size, speed, and good hands. Maybe he can take over that number one role. From the gun on third, McCown. Found his target. It's Anderson. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That goes as a gain of 36 on third down. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. First down, this is Forte. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. Now a run. This is Bilal Powell. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. 
It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. I can never stump you on stats, but go ahead and let the people know. Who was second in the NFL in 2016 in yards per carry? It was that man, Bilal Powell, right at five and a half. He may have had to share some carries in the backfield with Matt Forte, but boy, he took advantage of his touches. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. Now McCown on the bootleg. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. So on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit for Todd Bowles. This from 44 yards away. And Captain Zero's kick is right through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. So our initial drive here this afternoon results in three. I'm not sure that was a statement necessarily, but getting points on the road, never a bad thing. No question about it, Brandon. You had a crowd that was all fired up during pregame introductions, yet you're able to quiet them just a little bit by taking the early lead. After the made field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22 yard line. And yeah, the man under center for the Bills, Tyrod Taylor, brings him out. And new coach Sean McDermott, Charles, maybe opened a little bit of a can of worms after game two in the preseason, saying he was going to evaluate everything. Could that also mean the quarterback position? Well, if you say everything, that has it to does, mean the quarterback guess, yeah. position, even though he did go out of his way to say how much confidence he has in Tyrod Taylor and his ability to run the offense. And remember, Sean McDermott's a former defensive coordinator. What confounds defensive co coaches more than a quarterback who's mobile and can run? That's why Tyrod Taylor will probably get every opportunity to be the quarterback. But guess what? The Nathan Peterman train, it is already on the tracks. And this is McCoy. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And look at the starters now for the Buffalo Bills on offense. And I'll tell you what, receiver, a lot of reshuffling going on there, isn't there? Yeah, the key one is that Sammy Watkins is no longer Buffalo Bill. He was dealt to the Los Angeles Rams on August the 11th. But they did draft Zay Jones out of East Carolina. He's going to grow up in a big way and fast. And how about them acquiring Jordan Matthews from the Philadelphia Eagles? A revamped receiving core, but one with great potential. Now Taylor to throw on second down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Demario Davis coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Third and long, Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Now Taylor. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. A really nice gain of 25 yards. 
I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. He targets Jordan Matthews, and it's caught. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. down carry here for McCoy and he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four and a look now at how the Jets line up defensively this defense is well respected around the league and in 2015 they were ranked fourth overall in total defense you move ahead to what they did last year it looks pretty good on paper 11th overall just outside the top 10 but that collection of talent didn't pay off in the wins column. The team went 5-11, and 11, and they're looking to get all these pieces together and put this talent back on display. Come on, let's go! They'll go again to McCoy. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. For McCoy in the last seven years, five of them over 1,000 yards. Underrated in how strong he is through the hole, but the best part of his game, open field, where he makes a whole lot of people miss. In 2016, he was seventh in the league in rushing yardage. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Offense operates in the red zone. Here we go. Right at 38. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here we go. One, nine. They go play action here on first down. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Jordan Matthews, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Bills have taken the early lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Steven Hauschka for the point after. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown.
Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. The drive begins with a run by Forte. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Starters defensively for Buffalo, and defensively, you look at the secondary, E.J. Gaines, he's going to be trying to take the place of Ronald Darby, who was traded. Yeah, they acquired E.J. Gaines from the Los Angeles Rams, traded Darby to the Philadelphia Eagles, and E.J. Gaines is a tough, hard-nosed, instinctive player out on the corner. Darby had great potential as well. We'll see how this trade turns out for Buffalo. McCown to throw on second down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. A place like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Working from the gun, McCown. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. On is the second-year man from Sam Houston State, Lachlan Edwards, to punt it away. Back deep for the Bills, Brandon Tate. Fielded just inside the 20. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really looked clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play caller, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here at second and 12. To throw is Taylor. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Buster Screen. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Now they told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense. 
that the other defense is rated higher than them. You gonna let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. So out now come the Jets. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And a great spot to start this drive from here. So after the INT, it's McCown now. And he'll go out of bounds down inside the 15-yard line. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. That's a matchup. Maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, he'd always say, follow it away, lad. Follow it away because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about these say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he's usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Hey. On the draw, McCown leaves it to Forte. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. On the ground, Forte, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. This will be caught at about the five. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Matt Forte, a five-yard touchdown. And the Jets are able to strike for six. And that's another route that defenders would vote to take out of the game. The wheel route? Oh, without a doubt. You're just trying to move everybody in one direction. And whether it's a running back or another receiver, as they zip out on the sideline, you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, well, the defenders hate it there. It happened and it resulted in a touchdown. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. Just a four-play drive that time. And it ends with a Jet touchdown. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. 
Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He's likely still kicking himself from the interception last drive that wound up leading to a go-ahead score. And he's going to assume all that came with that one, all right? That's all on him, but he also knows he's got to erase it from his mind and get back out there. This drive, very important. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. And pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down, it's McCoy. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That good for 19 at a first down. Oh, he's got it going early in this one. That's the Shady McCoy. That's vintage right there, right? Breaking tackles, creating explosive runs. And if they don't take care of this early, Look out. This guy's got a big, big day. You know where he got that nickname Shady, by the way? I know you're going to educate me on it. Help me out. Mama. Mama gave him that name when he was a youngster. And if Mama named him Shady, we're going to call him Shady. Absolutely. And they'll keep on the ground with McCoy. And this time they're able to bottle him up as he'll stop him at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 10-7 our score. And we're back to upstate New York after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They've got it second and ten to start things out. to the shoulder pads took him right off his feet. So a third and nine, and six defensive backs out there in the dime. Patrolling the passing lanes. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. He's going deep for Brown. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Colton Schmidt, fourth-year man from UC Davis, on to put it away. Back deep to return it is Lucky Whitehead. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Yeah. 
Here's Matt Forte as he gets set to go and heads back out there. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series so it'll surface tab what's coming to play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. They start on the ground with Forte. Room past the 20. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. McCown now on first down. That's caught by the rookie from Cal, Chad Hansen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. McCown throwing on second. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by the rookie from LSU, Tredavious White. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. How Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Here comes LaShawn McCoy as he trots back out there now. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. And yeah, able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace it. left and now running right through him he's all alone Tyrod Taylor and all the way home for a Bills touchdown Tyrod Taylor with his second touchdown here in this first half and the Bills are in for six so a design run all the way and he took it the distance. I don't know that anybody saw that come. Well, on this play, how about the vision of him being able to see the open field, make his move, and get there? Oftentimes, defenses have a spy for the quarterback position to try and take care of it. 
on that play. If they did, it certainly is lost. Work. Yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt. Hauschka now for the extra point. And that makes it 14 10. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Jets' offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Forte gets the handoff from McCown, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They stay on the ground, Forte again. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. The Jets on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Shotgun here for McCown, and that is incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong, didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, 
those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Again, it's McCoy. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. An expecting pass. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. From this vantage point, they've got the lead here. So for me, that'd be enough to go ahead and punt the football and let my defense defend the long field. If you go for it, you don't get it, then you really put your defense in a tight spot. Yeah, but we never know what people ultimately will decide to do here on fourth and inches. Every time I see a coach challenge a spot, that makes me a little bit nervous for that coach. Those are very difficult to get overturned. Well, the biggest reason, correct me if I'm wrong, is just technology. A lot of times you just don't have the angle. Yeah, I think all the coaches, when they want to challenge that type of a play, they want to put the magnets or the, things, or the sensors in the ball to show exactly where it is. But right now, it's all about us humans. It's Taylor. Left side caught by Matthews. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him, and he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. Here we go! One, nine, one. Now Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 22 yards. And the Bills will add on to their lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Here's Hauschka for the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with a LaShawn McCoy touchdown run. Hauschka now to kick it away. 
This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. counter Forte and an alley to run and he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line give him 12 yards there and the Jets have a first well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain the defense have felt great about what they had going now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction can they bottle him up again because I'd say after that run confidence is pretty high for him Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. offense. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. So now first and 15. Following the penalty, it's Forte. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. They get one yard back there to make it second and 14. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. From the gun, it's McCown. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The Jets on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. offense. And that'll set him back five. Still third down. The Jets on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. Throwing now is McCown. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They'll give him a yard on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip tap, tip tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. Uh, he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now it's Tate. Oh, spinning away. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here now, a look at LaShawn McCoy. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. 
How come they didn't tell us about it? Because, because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Play fake here on first down. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Steve McClendon forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Second down, Taylor. And his throw is incomplete. Jordan Matthews, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. the gun it's Taylor it's complete to Brown right side and they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45 and a big 32 yard play on third there will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that have explosive plays that's often the difference in winning and losing those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Here we go! One, nine. On first down, it's Taylor. Over the middle here to Brown. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Taylor on first down. His throw incomplete. Charles Clay is tied in the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Second and ten now, it's Taylor. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Taylor will throw again. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. 
And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he's able to work it here to the 8-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. to throw again is Taylor. And that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. Jordan Matthews with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bills will extend their lead. Such an art to dot the I, just get the feet in right there against the line before going out of bounds. Such an incredibly graceful, athletic play, but also a lot of practice goes into it. They work on that to make sure that they learn how to train their feet to get down in bounds. Now Hausch could attack on the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. That time, a nine-play drive. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. Now it's Lucky Whitehead on the return. And he's got Rome. There he goes, left side. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. Zero now for the extra point. And that one makes this an 11 point deficit now. So that one goes down as a 99 yard kick return for six from the one yard line all the way to the house on the other end. So let's try this again after the kick return TD. Here's yet another kickoff. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Jordan Matthews here getting ready to go again on offense. And his two touchdowns, a big reason they're winning right now. So meaningful when you score and it's got your team out there in front. 
changes the complexion of everything you're doing. It's one thing to score them all in garbage time, but these count. This is a big deal, and he's making those types of plays, and I think they'll keep finding ways to get it to him. I was just going to say, probably going to go back to him. now Taylor on first down looking right sideline but it's incomplete Zay Jones was the intended receiver that'll bring up second down I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me I didn't see anything open and this play just didn't look right from the beginning it did not I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away dangerous pass incomplete Again, now it's Taylor on second and ten. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Andre Holmes that time. And it'll bring up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Third down, here's Williams. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Forty-six on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. Gets around him. Oh, and now he bowls him over. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And the Jets take possession. A chance for us to look now at the Bills' defense. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt well, Maybe about you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing, and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. First is McCown. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Second down following the incompletion. McCown looking to throw. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So here we go, first and 10 now. Right, here we go. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. second down and he's got his man on the out route and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 10 yards is the pickup good enough for a jet first down. On first and 10 here's McCown looking left side and he's got a man. It's handsome and he'll go down here at the 35 yard line. Now a timeout signaled for and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. So that one goes down as a 99-yard kick return for six from the one-yard line all the way to the house on the other end. Too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Bills are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Jets just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Matthews wide open here on the catch, and he kept off the nine play drive with a TD. The Bills go up by four. Austin's out now following the interception. Forte is wide open, able to make the grab. And he caps off the two-play drive with a score. Jets up by a field goal. Jets is on second and seven. The pass ends up being picked off. White's in position, and he's the one who comes away with the ball. Austin's on the field now after the INT. Taylor is going to hit off the left side, and he scoots into the end zone for a second TD. The lead grows to four. Now first and 10, McCoy's gonna look for space and nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. Bills go up by 11. Bills on second and seven. Taylor is on point with the throw and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. The Bills up now by 12. Hauska's got it on the tee. The kickoff return will start from the 43 and he's gone as he sprints to the end zone. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And they start the second half with a carry by McCoy. And it'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. They'll run it with McCoy. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you. And others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. The Bills on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Taylor. Man open right side, it's the tight end Clay. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> They go play action here on first down. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. They fake the give to Forte. Now McCown. He's going to let this one go deep. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the rookie from LSU, Tredavious White. Turnover differential last year in the NFL. The bottom five teams you'd expect. Rams, Browns, the Jags, the Bears, and the Jets. Tied at minus 20. These Jets, they have to solve that QB situation. They, along with the other teams that you noted, they've got to get better play in that area because no team goes to the playoffs minus 20 in turnover differential.
the interception. Here's Taylor. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. And the big guy catches the ball in the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now they'll try and run the sweep to McCoy. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. In my book, that's running the ball well but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the Let's clock. Go. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. And now running right through it. And eventually stopped just shy of the goal line right around the two. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. second half now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going and now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more right maybe they get the first score that doesn't happen it looks almost insurmountable but it's not let's see how hard they play the rest of the game Hauschka now for the extra point And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Hauschka now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now out come the Jets.
They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And it's second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Back to the air on second down. McCown. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. The Jets on third down. Just one for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and get it with Forte. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage would be found. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been terrific so far. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. Here's McCoy. Had the nifty footwork, but only able to get it to his own 20. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, Hard to get them started again occasionally. Second down following the run. Come on, let's go. They go now to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. <laughs> nice footwork by McCoy. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because in a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. First down carry, it's Williams. And some room to roam now. 25 yards, the pick up there, and also a first down. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to. They didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, and it created a big run. to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. Wide open receiver complete. And he takes it all the way down to the three. A big play here for Buffalo. 42 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this. 
but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Come on, let's go. One, nine, one. They'll try and run it with McCoy. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. This was boxing. You think maybe they would have thought about stopping this one because this defense has been bruised, it's been battered. But this is why they keep the fight going, right? They just got done with a really nice play, showing they still got a little bit left, don't they? Haven't had many plays that they can clip, put in the film room and smile about, but hey, there's one. Clip and save. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Come on, let's go! What? Nine. From the four, it's second and goal. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And that is going to set up third and goal. So much for having too many defensive linemen. Remember the reaction when the Jets took Leonard Williams? They said they've got too many. Uh-uh. Guy's a pro bowler in his second season. Yeah, seven sacks in that sophomore campaign last year. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Here we go. Brian 38. Cut. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Charles Clay from eight yards out. And the Bills will extend their lead. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Here's Hauschka for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Jets set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now McCown. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. 
So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. From the gun, it's McCown. Throw left side complete. That's Hanson. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. The offense on third down tonight, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. A running play now for Forte. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Cal. Safarian Jenkins has it. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Bills have recovered. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Here comes LaShawn McCoy as he trots back out there now. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here we go. Following the fumble recovery, it's Taylor. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Corey Brown, and now it's second down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Second and 10, it's Taylor again. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The turnover put them in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. The Bills on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and ten. Come on, let's go! Out of the gun, it's Taylor. It's caught, Jones, and he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. Zay Jones, a second-round pick from East Carolina. Some thought could have been a first-round pick from East Carolina. High-volume guy at East Carolina. I mean, the big-time catch, 158 of them in 2016. And he's an NFL legacy. His father, a longtime linebacker in the league. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now a 20th carry here for McCoy. A great move in there, but it only takes him to the seven. He's dropped there. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down at four now. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. The Bills on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and four. Here we go. One, two, one. Operating from the gun. Taylor. Open man is Holmes. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Andre Holmes from six yards away. And the Bills head on. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Now, this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. Hauschka now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And New York set to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it now yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> It's Hanson, and he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Jet first down. So the offense has it first and 10. Working from the gun, McCown. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for our Darius Stewart there. And that'll bring up second down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it. And he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second down, Forte. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. 
Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Jets on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and nine. Shotgun here for McCown. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take it down to the 40. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now McCown. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The former Clemson Tiger, Sharon Peak, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. False start, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Personal foul, face mask, defense. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now a first down following that long gain. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. False start, offense. So that'll back him up five. First and 15 here behind the chains. And here is motion again. And that's going to be two in a row. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Now 
Now McCown. Incomplete over the middle. Safarian Jenkins. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. In the red zone this time. Again, it's McCown. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Marcel Darius in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. The Jets on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This will be third and forever. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. So that one will be accepted. The Jets on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This will be third and a mile. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Let's go. Three, let's go. To throw, it's McCown. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. 19 yards is the pick up there, but even with that, they're well short. It's fourth down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. And the coach has decided to challenge this play. He has tossed down the red flag. So on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit for Todd Bowles. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And that will wind up just short. He had it on line. It ran out of gas at the end. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage. But you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. The Bills getting set to go. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. <laughs> when do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, 
Just don't really do that in the NFL. You know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and easy, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now Taylor to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Jets' offense gets ready to head back on the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus-yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Let's go. Green 39. Green 39. On first and ten, here's McCown. He's gonna find his running back. It's complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 17 yards for the Jets there as they've got themselves a first down. They could not be more opposite in build. But coming into 2017, Matt Forte pretty much neck and neck with Darren Sproles for most receptions by a running back. Yeah, both guys just over 500 into the year. You can't afford to make any kind of mistakes, but it's been pretty symptomatic what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Here now, a look at LaShawn McCoy. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went into halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Here we go. One, nine. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. So up through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Come on, let's go. They'll go again to McCoy. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a four-yard pickup. And that'll bring up a third and one. 
On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Encroachment defense. They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know, defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. Fresh set of downs here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. After the penalty, it's McCoy. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. So they're operating in the red zone. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Bills on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. Here it's third and three. Taylor now to throw on third down. And that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. On fourth down, Sean McDermott trots the field goal unit out there. His kick is good. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. to the main field goal. Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? when they only gave up the field goal and they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession the coach will just be relieved though if they recoup with a score here right i think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield punching the end zone without turning it over the drive begins with a run by forte and not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28 yard line Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On second down, here's McCown. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Personal foul, placement, defense. 
So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. So here we go, first and 10 now. McCown looking to throw. He gets it here to peak. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. A gain of six there on first. Four yards remaining now on second down. McCown going to throw. Drops it underneath to Forte. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. the offense lining up first and ten. Here's McCown to throw. That's complete over the middle to Anderson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. is McCown. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Getting late in the fourth now, Charles. Two-minute warning just around the corner. Yeah, some teams just want to get to that spot, take a breath, and then come out and attack for the rest of the game. It's McCown again. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. symptomatic and how this game's been going. Got to be wary of throwing an interception here because the defense knows they're going to get tested deep. That's why they're going to put a couple of extra guys back there to try and prevent that. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter here, trying to preserve the lead. So on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit for Todd Bowles. From the left hash, this from 37. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. 
Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's likely not going to matter much, but at least they get themselves three points closer to respectability. And I don't know that they're going to feel a whole lot better about things because they've clearly been outplayed all game long. But hey, no reason not to take the points when the opportunity presents itself. To the made field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25 yard line. Now the Bills' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home all right and sometimes you don't win all of them but they managed to get that done today just think about your routine stays the same everything's familiar you feel right going into the game and they translated that into a win they did indeed they protected the home field and now the final stages they'll start the drive with a carry by mccoy and he powers his way up past the 30. it's a six yard pickup but it gets him to second and four Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Come on, let's this is McCoy, and he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks at the 32-yard line. Just a yard of the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Bills on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This time it's third and three. Now Taylor. And Matthews over the middle with a grab. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And we're hitting the end of this one, and it looks to probably be the final play. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Bills are victorious as we say so long from Buffalo.